Hello, welcome to Sigma Tech Learning Hub. I will be your instructor for mathematics. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. If you don't have the application already installed on your device, I will want you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. Exam Guides is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams like UTME, post-UTME, YEC, GC, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEP, Carbopedia, BESE, JSCE, NCEE, and NECO, ETC. You can download the app from www.examguide.com or Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to be updated on new videos. Ready for today's class, okay? Let's get started. You are welcome to today's class. Our topic for today is Set Theory 1. Let us look at our specific objectives. By the end, you are expected to know the following. What are the definition of set? What a set is? List elements of set. Explanation of terms. OK, let us go to the next definition of set. A set is just a collection of a well-defined object. When you hear the word well-defined, that is, things that are related to each other, collection of a well-defined objects. For instance, I have marker. You can see it. I have book. The pack of marker. If you watch very well, the elements that are related to each other are just marker to marker. And this, this is a piece of paper. Another well-defined object. The use of mathematical set. If you open a mathematical set, you can see different things in it. You have the protractor pair of compass, the divider, pencil, ruler, etc. It's just a set. Mathematical set is a set. Collection of well-defined objects. You can talk of set of students in the class. Maybe SS1 will have boys and girls. Or maybe in high institution, it's a mixture of boys and girls. So from there, you can also pick out a set, elements of set. Talking about elements of set, this is just the listing of the elements in a given set. So when you want to select or list out elements in a given set, such an element could be a prime number, even number, odd numbers, or factors of a given numbers, or maybe what are the multiples of so, so numbers? Look at example one here. We have if A is a set of prime numbers between 1 and 50, list the elements of A. Now, considering the question given to us, the elements of A, we are talking about if A is a set of what? Prime number between 1 and 50, list the elements of A. Now, the elements of A, this open brace is used to involve our set, why some of you write bracket? No. So, between 1 and 50, the prime numbers there are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17. 15 is not a prime number because it can be divided by 3. 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, 39 is not a prime number then, 41, 43, 
45 is not a prime number, 47, then 49, 49 is not a prime number. You pause. These are the elements of set A. The listen here, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, 41, 47. They are all the elements or members of the set called A. The next, list the elements of the set. Given that A is an even number less than 50, if A is a set of even number less than 50, this implies that we are going to list even numbers. Even numbers start from 2. The next four, the next six, meaning let's say A equals two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-two, thirty-four, thirty-six, thirty-eight. 40, 42, 44, 46, 48, less than 50, so I will not include 50. If I include 50, it's out of it. Now, we have to stop just at this. So, however, listing the elements of a given set, you must know what you are doing exactly. For instance, if you don't know the meaning of even number, you will know what to list. Even number, they are just numbers that can be divided by what? Two. Why prime numbers? They have only two factors. For instance, two is a prime number. Why? How many factors are there? One comma two. Three is a prime factor. Why? You have one comma three. But seven, nine is not a prime factor, prime number, that is 1, comma 3, comma 9. It has more than two factors. So prime number is dealing with just what? How many factors? Two. So take note of that. Whenever a given number is having more than three other options, not exactly two, they are no longer called a prime number. Take note of that. Let us take a look at another one. These elements of the set B being a natural counting numbers. When you consider a natural counting numbers, when we talk about one, two, they are all counting numbers. Natural counting numbers. Now, how do you know where to stop? It was not specified. So you have to be very careful about the listen. So you are going to include, this is more or less uh, trying to point at the infinite set. Though we'll talk about infinite set later. But now, I want to list all the counting, natural counting numbers, but not all. I have to put somewhere. If B is natural, meaning 1,2,3,4, dot, 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 meaning it continues. It has no limit to infinity. So these are examples of what natural counting numbers explanation of some terms in set theory the first one here is what subset now considering a set b if i have another set p to contain two three six seven just like this if set B is a natural counting number, and I have another set P, P is a subset of B. Meaning, subset of a given set is just part of the set, but not the full set itself. When we talk about encapsulation, you have a superclass and a subclass. In encapsulation, the superclass will encapsulate the subclass. Meaning, a subset is a part of a given set. Maybe sets A, B, D, or whatever. 
but I'm not talking about universal set, which is the set of every other set or the mother of all sets. It's a different thing entirely. So let's consider the next thing. After the subset, here we are seeing the empty set. From the word empty means a set that contains no number in it or no alphabet in it. Empty means zero. If I say A equals zero, it means A is empty. But mathematically, or in search, how you write it properly is just this, A equals, be careful, don't write this. You tell me this is empty set, no. It is not empty, it is containing what? Zero. Now, the main empty means this symbol that looks like phi, at times we call it phi, but we are now considering this theta. Let's not just use phi for the what? The empty set. So, if zero is in this particular set A, it means it is not empty. So, this is empty set empty set this is not an empty set so an empty set is a set which contains no number or alphabet in it or you can identify or represent it with the symbol this or this but not this universal sets universal set like i said when i was trying to explain the subset it shows the mother set the set of every other set, or the set that contain every other set. For instance, I have set A to be a prime number less than 20. If A cause prime numbers less than 20, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, and another set B equals 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I pause. The universal set equals, let's say natural count number 1, 2, dot, 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 to the end. Maybe, yeah. Or let's say 1, 2, 100. Let us not use, continue to use an infinite set. This one around, let us make use of what a finite set. Meaning from 1 to what, 100. This is the universal set. If you watch very well, all the numbers which are prime numbers in the set A, they are all found in what? They can be seen in the universal set. Why is the set B, which is, a even, which is an even number, they can all be seen in the what? The universal set, meaning the molar set. A set that contains every other set in it is called what? The universal set. It is represented with the symbol nil. Or some book will tell you like this. Something that looks like E, but exactly it's not an E. You can use this. Why some of you like writing like this? But try to practice this. So either this or this can serve as your universal set, and some people will use this. Some people look like you, but actually it's not you. You are representing what? Universal set. So the next thing here is what the finite set. Talking about finite set, a finite set is a set that are countable. It has a limit. Let me say even numbers from 2 to 10. I am aware that my limit is just what? 10. Therefore, it is what? Finite. But if I tell you even numbers from two up, okay, just give me a set of even numbers from two up, there is no limit in it. That one becomes an infinite set. So an infinite set is a countable set. Why an infinite set is what an uncountable set? It has no limit, but infinite set, it has a limit. Let's say set K, equals set of even numbers from 2 to 10. I will say 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 
you are aware that you are stopping exactly at where? 10. Are they countable? Yes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You know that how many numbers are there which are even number from 2 to 10? Five numbers. So that is a finished set, a set that you can count. It has a limit. Why infinite set? Just the opposite of what a finished set, like I said, it is limitless. How do you represent an infinite set? Whenever you see a set, let's say set P equals this. 1, 4, 7, 10, dot, 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 dot. This is what? An infinite set. It is infinite. Countless. You keep on writing the number. Let's think about uh, reoccurring decimal. You keep dividing. Number keeps increasing. It will continue to go, continue to go. Something of that nature is limitless. It has no end. So that is that about the infinite set. Now let us consider the union and the intersection of a set. When I talk about union, the combination of two or more sets, making them to become a particular set of interest. Union, if I have set A to be this, one, three, five. Set B, two, four, six. Two, four, five, six. If I say union, which is represented with the symbol U, it looks like a U, U, and I say A, union B, meaning A combining B in a serial order without repetition is the union of the set A and B. How do you do that? Here, we have one, but there is no one here because you are combining together, you must choose one. One, comma, the next, this two, Three. This is four. There is five. There is five. You just choose one. Just like LCM, you choose this. That's five. Then six. Look at it. I have combined set A and B to form a particular set which can be maybe serve as a universal set depending on the nature of what you are trying to form. So you can look at it. That is just union, the combination of two or more sets. Because I'm saying more sets. If I have set C, let's say 10, 15, 20. So A union B union C will be what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 15, 20. You cannot involve any number that is not contained in the sets given. You cannot manipulate it. You follow the one given to you while you combine your set. Now let us think about the intersection. Intersection means what two people or elements have a number have in common in terms of number or variable. I'm Mr. Christian. If Uche is having pen and I have pen too, I have a book. Uche is also having a book. Then I have laptop, but Uche is not having laptop. What do we have in common? Our intersection is just the pen and book. Laptop is out of it. But when I want to involve pen, book, and laptop, I'm talking about union. But when I'm talking about what can be seen in my own belonging, which are also in his, it is what the intersection. Now, two sets are said to have common things in order if there is a similar number in particular set, say A, let's use this, A 
1,3,5 and another set B 2,5,4,6 what do they have in common? The thing that is common here is U, 5. Therefore, A intersection B equals 5. You're right. But assuming that there is nothing in common, you now say A intersection B equals empty set. Or you can say this, 5, empty. So, intersection is very clear and it is represented with the symbol small n. Why union of a set is represented with the symbol small u? Complement of a set. We'll talk about complement. A complement is simply what can be seen in a given subset or universal set which is not seen in another set, let's say B. If set A contains one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, dot, dot, to ten, the B prime, CB, the elements of B are 2, 4, 5, 6. Now, B prime complement is called prime or B prime this way. Or you can write like this, B raised to the power small c, meaning complement. Or you go with this, complement. So the complement of the set B here now from the set A, B complement equals... The numbers you can see here, which are not here, they are the complement of this set. So we can see three here, but there is no three here. We see four, there is four. You have five, there is five. You have six, there is six. We have seven, there is no seven. We have eight, there is no eight. We have nine, there is no nine. Then finally, ten. So the complements of the set B is what? 1, 3, 7, 8, 9, 10. Complement. That is the number which when you add, it will not make a B to be a complete one. Just having the same numbers which A is with. They are what? Said to be the complement. Those elements of variable that you can see in the universal set which cannot be seen in the subset, say A, B, or C, they are called the what? The complement of the given set. Now we're talking about power of set. Power of set. I have given instance of the complement of a set. Now power of set. The power of set is represented with the symbol 2 raised to the power n. Where n represents what? The number of elements that can be seen in a given set. Let's say n set A equals this 2, 4, 6. Our n now is what? n meaning number of elements in this set A equals what? How many are they? One, two, three. Equals who? Three. Now, what is the power of this set? The power of the set, power equals two raised to the power n, meaning two raised to the power three. The power of set equals what? Eight. So, eight becomes the solution to this explanation. So, this is the mathematical aspect of it. So the power of set is represented by what? 2 raised to the power n. Where n represents the number contained in the given subset or in a universal set, but mostly a subset. Let us take more sample from past question using our exam guide software. Okay.
Look at this. Given the set, if P equals minus 3 less than x less than 1, then under set Q equals minus 1 less than x less than 3. Find the real numbers. Okay, where S is the real number? Find P. Do you remember this? Meaning, find P intersection Q. You can't just find P intersection Q without listing the elements of the set. That's the need for learning how to, knowing how to list an elements of a given set. Now, to list the elements of P, when I say P, you must understand this inequality sign. This thing means that x is greater than what? Minus 3, but it's less than 1. So, if x is greater than minus 3, what are the elements? Meaning minus 2, minus 1, 0. The instruction is less than 1. So, if I include 1, I am no longer following the instruction given to us. So, the next the elements of Q, you list it too. Meaning, this means X is greater than minus 1, but it's less than who? 3. Let us list it. What number greater than minus 1? Meaning, 0, 1, 2, less than 3. Can you see it? So that is that. Now, the conclusion for this solution, P intersection Q equals what? What do they have in common? It's just zero. Now it's zero. Look at our option. But we can't see zero there. But there is something that has been represented. The question came in form of what? Inequality. Therefore, this answer must be represented in form of what? Inequality. So if we zero is our answer, watch we we'll have option A as minus one less than S less than who? One. Let us interpret. What's the meaning? It means S is greater than minus one, but less than who? One. Interpreting S is greater than minus one, meaning that S equals to zero only. Therefore, this solution is here, meaning the answer is what? Option A. Let me make you believe what I'm doing here now. Let us test the one for C. You are having minus 3 less than who? X less than 1. Let us test the reality of this. X means it's greater than minus 3, but less than who? 1. Let us interpret, meaning minus 2, minus 1. Zero. So in our solution, do we have minus two comma minus one comma zero? No, is the answer. We only have what zero, which suits this option. Therefore, option C is the correct answer. Let us see if it is true with what they have in our software here. Okay, the correction. Can you see it? Option A is the answer. Let's take one more question from past question theory using exam guide. Okay. Look at the universal set given here. The universal set U which is universal set 1 comma 2, 3, dot dot to 10. And A, a subset, 1 comma 2, 3, 4, 5. Subset B, 
2,3,5 and set subset C 6,8,10 we have a diagram that contains all the sets This universal set, set A and set B encapsulated. This is five, one. Set C. 8,10, this is. Okay. Now, given that the Venn diagram represents the sets above, copy and fill in the elements. Okay, we have to fill in the elements here. How do we fill it? See your universal set, but don't start with the universal set. Start with the subset. Now, what to complete set A? We have two in A. I will write two. We have three in A, I will write three. We have four in A, I will write four. The five in A is already here. Look at B. B is containing two, it's already there. Then three is already there. Five is there. Now, if B is found or seen in, in A, it means that all these numbers here, 2,3, meaning A is still the owner of the remaining numbers, though they, are found, they, are, they can be seen in B, 2,3,5. To complete A now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Can you see it? Now let us complete set C. We have 8, 10, 6. If we have 9 here, the universal set, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 here, 6 then seven somewhere eight is already here nine is here then ten now thinking about the universal set see it one two three four five six seven eight nine ten which is this set a one two three four five which is this set b two three five and set c six eight and ten so the next question here is when we complete this let us look at the next question. Find A intersection C. A intersection C imply or will give us this. Where is A? C it. Where is C? C it. There is six. No six. Eight. No eight. Ten. No ten. Meaning A intersection C is what? Empty set. This or this. So while you are writing your choosing choice of your solution in exam hall, you either use this or this as an empty set. So that is the end of this topic for set theory part one. The next one we are going to see the one we call the Venn diagram. Next class. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the exam guide app. The app scores and give a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. You can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mock mode, and practice mode. It also has other features that make learning fun. It is a must for all serious students. 
download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Hit the notification bell and share the videos to people that will benefit from it. Bye.